Today, we're talking about how to focus our fire to drastically increase our lethality as a squad, both with teammates on comms and with our random squad mates. Welcome to the SCS Emperor of Democracy. My name is Commissar Kai, and today I'm going to teach y'all how to focus your fire with your teammates by using the best visual aid that I know. Frickin' heaps of laser beams. When you see a giant beam of death siphon its way through a horde of bugs chasing you, it's a strong incentive to add your own firepower to the mix so you don't get left out of our most sacred of democratic processes, turning these socialist animals into E-710 for Super Earth. So buckle up, grab your snacks, and follow me while I show you that this meme build has teeth. Today, we've got a special guest, the ghost diver himself, Aravin. This hell divers taught me a lot about how the game works, and they are supremely talented at stealth gameplay. But today, we're doing things my way with outrageous amounts of violence and hatred of our enemy. I've got another video with Arabin coming up where they show me and the commandos how to mesh stealth gameplay with my more aggressive style. Oh yeah. Remember, balanced. Super balanced. <laughs> the kills this is what a balanced loadout looks like. This is, this is a meme, okay? Don't try this at home, it's just a meme. It's clearly, a, it's just a meme, you know? It's just yep. a meme. It's just a meme. Just a meme. But for now, let's get back into the topic of today's video by introducing our loadout. Now, I do want to be clear on one thing. If you bring every laser available to you, it is a bit of a meme build that will struggle against certain enemy types. So instead, we're going to take a kit that can stand up to the rigors of Super Hell Dive. Our core synergy with this one is going to be using the Scythe and Laser Cannon in concert. Having two weapons that both use heat sinks means that you can constantly swap between the two of them whenever one of them's in danger of overheating. This lets you pour continuous high hot death onto these skittering scumbags without ever needing to worry about running dry on ammo. The scythe hits like a truck with 350 damage per second, second only to the Eruptor, Crossbow, and Dominator in terms of raw damage. Plus, it comes with the added benefit of setting the enemy's democracy on fire. The only downside is its light penetration and complete lack of stagger, making it pretty ineffective against those medium armored enemies unless you're aiming for weak spots. It's also surprisingly effective when you fire it from the hip because it's very obvious where you're shooting. To offset these weaknesses against medium enemies, we have the scythe's bigger brother, the laser cannon. This is going to be our answer for medium enemies and for popping charger butts. It can also take down structures like spore spewers and shrieker nests as long as you're within 200 meters of the target. For the longest time, I thought the laser cannon was useless against the bugs, but it deals with alpha commanders, hive guard, charger butts, and bile spewers with a shock and alacrity and has earned its place among the best support weapons against the bugs. You can swap out the scythe for the sickle if you prefer, but you will be taking a hit in the raw damage department. Filling out the rest of our weapons, we have the laser guard dog for a little bit of extra help with swarms of enemies, and to show off our core concept of focus and fire. The stun grenades to offset the biggest weakness of running all lasers, that being a lack of stagger, and the grenade pistol for closing bug holes. You can run another stratagem like sentries, eagles, or orbitals, or even a shield pack if you want to swap the guard dog out, but we do need both the stun grenades and the grenade pistol, so we're not just completely completely out of luck if we run into a bug nest or a stalker lair. For stratagems, I recommend taking the Orbital Precision Strike and the 500kg to quickly bust open those heavy targets and put a hurtin' on bug nests. You can swap out the Orbital Precision Strike for the Gas Strike if you want more effectiveness against bug breaches with the slow gas damage and stacking fire damage from our weapons and nuking all the little bugs. But if you find yourself on a jungle or a swamp planet, ditch the 500kg instead for the Orbital Gatlin Barrage. This is just so you're not wasting valuable Super Earth resources on your personal deforestation project. If you like giving the bugs involuntary LASIK surgery, then consider liking the video. That one click is the best way to support this channel and manage democracy by spreading the good word of cooperation and team play to the rest of the fleet. To see more content like this, subscribe to the channel for new videos every week. If you find yourself lacking for squad mates and want to experience solid team play for yourself, come enlist in my platoon by joining the Discord linked in the description below. Now let's get into how we're going to be focusing our fire with our teammates. Cross the beams on his sack. We can do it. That's we have not, the power. That is not a sentence I thought I'd hear today. <laughs> <laughs> I did not wake up expecting that one. Uh, he's dead, T2. <laughs> T2, no! <laughs> I'm breaking this video up into two main parts. 
first, we're going to look at the core concept of focus and fire with our teammates through picking the right targets and positioning ourselves well. Where you stand and what you shoot at is essentially the Hell Divers version of body language, and it tells your team all they need to know about your intentions. I get a lot of comments telling me that it's too hard to cooperate with random squad mates for a variety of reasons, but I'm here to tell you all that ain't always the case. You have a lot more control over what your team does than you might think, and most of that control comes from watching what your team is doing and adapting to those circumstances, or in other words, reading the Helldiver body language. Sticking near your teammates and cooking up the targets that want to rip them in half doesn't take a whole lot of coordination. It just requires that you actually give a damn about helping out your squad. When you look out for your brothers and sisters in arms, they'll notice and want to look out for you the majority of the time the vast majority of the time. And you all benefit from this unspoken teamwork. For the second part, we're going to address those circumstances where you do find yourself alone. We'll look at how to use this loadout to bring democracy's judgment straight to our enemies so that we can get back to our team and support them once again. We're dangerous on our own. But when we use this loadout and focus our fire to back up our team, you and your squad become unstoppable. When it comes to focus and fire, we want to make sure we're doing it to the right targets. So let's quickly go over the most dangerous enemies the bugs have in order so that you have a better idea what to shine your light of democracy on first. Hopefully this ain't a surprise, but the most dangerous enemy has always been hunters. These spindly freaks are the fastest enemies that the bugs have. They can leap a good distance straight at your face and they poison you, lowering your movement speed and setting you up to get deleted in a variety of ways. Next we have the Alpha Brood Commanders. We're extremely well equipped to handle these enemies with our laser cannon, taking just about one second per head. We want to take these dudes out quick since they can summon an army of spicy warriors to soak up your ammo and chase you down. Then we've got Impalers, Chargers, and Titans, in that order. Impalers are the only enemy on here that you will need to actively hunt down and set up a date between them and 500 kilograms of democracy. Only run from them in the most dire of circumstances since their tentacles have a range of 180 meters. Chargers are deceptively easy to deal with when you run in this loadout since you have three separate ways of dealing with them. Those being the 500 kg, orbital precision strike, and the good old fashioned stun grenade back shot combo. It only takes about five seconds of fire on a full health charger to microwave their butt, which is conveniently about the same time a stun grenade lasts. So don't be afraid to whip this one out once all the nearby hunters are either stunned or dead. Now that you know the target priority list, let's mix this knowledge in with team play. I'm going to show y'all us fighting a bug breach, and I want you to keep our list of enemies in mind, but also pay attention to how we talk about where we want to fight. We are using comms in this one, but you can always run to a good spot, ping where you are, and just start raining hell down on whatever is giving your team grief. That way, even if they're not cooperating with you, you're in a good spot, you're helping them out, and you're doing your job. I'll catch up with y'all in just a moment. I, I love how effective this is. I know! It's really good! It's <laughs> really funny. <laughs> That's why I made a video about it. Oh, they're calling it a hey, breach! Let's uh, up let's here. stack oh, up oh. this way, stack up this way, stack up this way. Uh, right there? We have some decent distance. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah alright, alright. We want to get some decent distance Oh, here, away here we can get on the hill a little bit. Give us a little bit of overwatch. Oh, yeah. Good idea. T2, quit playing with the bugs. Get over here. <laughs> Firing my dagger while I'm running. Another uh, charger just spawned in. Throwing a 500 at him. Here comes the cavalry. That 500 is going to be a lot better than you think, I think. Oh, I missed. Oh, nice. Oh, hit him in try the squishy his, bits. Try his belly. Try his yeah. belly. Oh, we got another one. I got no PS. I got a 500, but I don't think we're going to need it. I'm waiting for him to close. Oh, wait, we're jammed. We're jammed. We're jammed. I killed his sack. I hope you all can see just how effective staying near your squad and firing in the same direction from an advantageous position can be. I want you all to imagine how that would have gone if we'd had a mix of support weapons and stratagems instead of this all laser build. But even without spears, autocannons, commandos, or any of the meta primaries, 
we're able to take out a heavy armor bug breach by just focusing down all the little guys and then collectively turning on the bigger targets. The orbital precision strike in the 500 kg, I had the orbital gas in this game, gives you plenty of options to clear out any armor while your AT specialist is out of ammo or otherwise engaged. If we kill all these types of enemies, hunters, brood commanders, bile spewers, etc., it gives our team a lot more space to work with to get their heavy ordnance on the right target. Feeling powerful in this game is really just a mindset of doing it as a team. When you have four different primary weapons all shooting in the same direction at the same targets, it's not an additive power boost. It's exponential. You will do so much more damage and be so much more lethal if you just fight from a good position and play around your team, even if they're doing stuff you don't entirely agree with. That's why I created this loadout. I wanted to take weapons that were typically considered bad against the bugs and see if I could really make it into something that's worthwhile and good. And I'm telling y'all, I have not had a single game where I ran this loadout against the bugs and I got fewer than 500 kills. It's legitimately good, even if you're not doing this all laser beam nonsense. The only reason I showed y'all this with all the laser beams is because it really makes it easy to see who's shooting what. But I do want y'all to take this concept into your own games. So if you've been struggling lately, I want y'all to go into your next game thinking about how you can help your teammates by taking aim at the same targets that are giving your squad grief. I am committed to showing my fellow Helldivers how to feel strong in this game because I want y'all to have fun with it. Sometimes I think we get a little too down about decisions that are out of our control. But we can take that control back by sticking together, both as a squad and as a community. Now, I'm sure y'all want to see those big kill streaks and crazy situations that we can deal with completely on our own using this build. So let's hop into part two, standing on your own two feet. But first, a word from the Impaler Space Program. I'm... Uh, uh, you know what? I'm fine. Just a little worried, but I'm fine. <laughs> Never let them see your fear. Oh, damn it. I'm feeling a little bit of fear. There's a trailer. <laughs> you oh, you damn look it. like you're feeling a bit of fear. There's a tinge of fear right now. <laughs> Where is he? You can cross the beams. He's right there. You and your stupid face. So if you or your family and friends need to get something into orbit in a hurry, just take out an impaler's face while you're standing a little bit too close. Honestly though, Arrowhead, can we please fix this? This is ridiculous. Just to show you all the effect in this loadout, I'm going to show you two instances where I'm basically by myself. One, I'm kind of by myself, and the second one, I'm completely alone. But these are how you get those big kill streaks and deal with the large number of enemies on Super Hell Dive. So let's play the first clip. Oh, this is a big nest. Oh, never mind. It's just a bug breach nearby. I know this is like oh yeah, that is actually that is a decent point. I could do that. Do what? If I leave the game, the host will migrate and I can rejoin the game. Yeah, yeah, give that a shot. I need to get back the operation in wouldn't finish. The operation won't finish, but I mean, well, will it not finish? Won't it? No, it'll. For um... you guys. We can finish the mission, but when you go back to your destroyer, it won't count as having finished the mission. Hopefully y'all can see how just having an enormity of lasers firing in the same direction just melts all the smaller enemies in the game. I think that the guard dog does the same as the scythe. They both are called the Laz 5. So if that's true, that's about 600 damage per second on the same target as long as you're shooting with the guard dog shooting. So pretty much anything up to a brood commander will be murdered by this thing just with your scythe and your guard dog. And then you have your laser cannon for those medium armored enemies like hive guard or uh, what are they called? Bile spewers. Now I know I can hear it already. Y'all are saying, but Commissar, those were all little bugs. That was no challenge at all. Well, now we're going to take a look at what happens when I solo a bug breach that has four impalers and a spore charger in it. So hopefully that will lay any claims that this is just a meme build to rest. So let's take a look. Oh, that did not. <laughs> that is right on top of me. I might need to leave. Yep. I don't know why I keep trying to do that. Oh, well. I tried to do the thing where you, uh, you let you shoot the the bulb under you and you eat yourself in the direction you're going. 
but uh, I used myself backwards and then straight up. So. behind me in the patrol all right well i have all the attention right now y'all should be good to destroy this fence I guess I can't blow it up with this yeah I think it's the old demolition thing again yeah I think you're right All right, guard dog if you could please not murder me that would be great oh the impalers despawned all right that works oh, awesome Never mind, no, I was wrong. I found them. They're right here. Oh. Can Just... you ping it? Let's see if I can get an angle on it. I got him with the 500, I think. Nice. Goodbye. So I hope you all can see that by just staying mobile and keeping all my beams going in the same direction and making use of the fact that I can never run out of ammo, I was able to take on pretty much that whole bug breach. I did die once, but that was an unforced error where I got stuck on terrain. If I would just dodged out of that terrain, I could have survived and probably killed both the Impalers of the 500. But that's all I have for y'all today. So until next time, this is Commissar Kai, signing out.